Well, we greet you in the Holy Ghost. Amen, I'm Brother Dwayne. And we welcome you to another exciting episode of the Cry for America. We are brought to you by the Shekinah Family Worship Center, where Pastor Fields is our leader. We can be reached on the phone at area code 313-300-6457 or find us on social media under the Cry for America. We're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, and this Podbean podcast. Please subscribe to our channel. Leave a like, a thumbs up, a comment. Share it across your social media platforms and help us to let this word of God go forth as we are documenting God's servant, Apostle Kwa, as he is ministering here September 18th of 2022, ministering on preparing for the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. Are you ready, believer? Are you ready, child of God, man of God? Are you ready for heaven? Amen. Let's go now to Apostle Kwa as he is ministering this word of life. Holy Ghost, as yes, usual. It, it is about going to heaven. I don't preach nothing more about, about nothing but Christ and heaven. So if anybody don't want to go to heaven, you know, don't come. If you want to go to heaven, make sure you come because you will hear the message that will help you go to heaven. Okay, because that's what it's all about. There are many are preaching, but are they sending them to heaven? Many are preaching, but what are they saying? Jesus. Many are preaching this morning, the whole, all the churches, yeah, every church is packed. Yes. But what are they going to hear? A message that is going to tell them that heaven is real and that it, it will cost them, cost them some ribs, some barbecue dinners, yes. so they can seek the Lord with their whole being. Ba, 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 ba. What message are they going to hear? You see, that is the whole point. We go to church, but what do we hear? Yeah, God. God help us that when we come together, we are going to waste time. Paul said, when I came among you, I decided I ain't going to hear nothing. Nothing from you, know, from you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. So that's yeah. all I cared about. That yeah. I will present, you, present to you a Christ who paid a terrible price for your soul. Amen. That's what he preached about, so that men will know that a price has been paid. Um, a price has been paid for their soul to yeah. come out of darkness into the marvelous light of God. Oh, yeah. Yes, God. That's what Paul did, and I'm going to follow his footsteps. You ain't yeah. going to hear anything from me except Jesus Christ yeah. and the power he has to bring you home. Amen. That's it. If you don't hear that, then why are we coming together? Yeah, come on. We are not going to hear from our father that yes, we can make it. It's not. It's not an automatic, you know, in a thing. Like some people, you know, all, always think. Yeah, yeah, because they start coming to my heart, and that's the end of it. Then they say, oh, "One save, always save." I I wonder if those people read the word. I wonder if they read they read First Corinthians chapter ten. I wonder if if they have read it before. Woo. I wonder if they know there was a man called Judas. He was an apostle. Apostle of the Lamb. I wonder if they, if they remember that. Ooh, yes, God. Uh, I, wonder, I wonder the words of the flesh that I listed did. If anyone is in them, will they make it? No. Okay. So I wonder why they no. say one say what we say. So get 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 that attitude out of your heart. If there is something that you are you are banking on, yeah, because you invited Christ into your heart, and that's automatic heaven. Oh no, oh no. If it was so, Judas will be there. If it was so, then you know, those in in First Corinthians chapter ten who fell in the wilderness, okay, when they were delivered, they were saved from Egypt, but they died in the wilderness. They didn't make it. They didn't make it. They didn't even have anyone to bury them. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm very, very concerned with the same concern the Lord has in his heart for his children who are not coming to him. Children who are not coming to him. Ain't that something? Here you are. You know, you came to visit your children on earth. All right? It's okay, sons. Uh, I'm going in a home to prepare a place for you. 
I'll be waiting for you, okay? You take the uh, Boeing 777, and then you, you know, you get your ticket and then you fly. But make sure that before you, you get your ticket, you are ready to come. That, you know, you, you, you paid all the, uh, all, uh, all that needs to be done. You've done it all. Yeah. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. Ah, there is, we are announcing the flight of Boeing 777-1001 on its way to hell. Wow. What happened? My children are on their way to hell. This flight is for hell. And I'm waiting for this flight to bring my children. So it was all the flights that were announced. Or rather, they announced it landed in hell. And you were still waiting for your children to come home. Think about that. Think about how the Lord feels. Think about how your God feels. Always disappointed. Disappointed by his disobedience to our children. Who know what to do. And yet they allow the devil to lie to them. Can you imagine? You are waiting for your children to come home. And the last thing you heard is that the flight they took, yes, they didn't arrive in, in, uh, in their destination, went straight to hell. Wake up and really understand what I'm talking. This is, a, this, this is you know, it's a, it's a what? It's a parable, but it's a very good parable. Okay, knowing Amina. exactly what the Lord is expecting. The Lord is expecting you and me home. Amen. Not in hell. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And when Amen. I go out and I'm done, I'll come back for you. But when he comes back for, you know, you know, for us, all our, his children were already gone to hell. Can you imagine? Brethren, don't break the, the heart of the Lord. Give him the joy of welcoming you in heaven. Woo! The joy of saying, well done, son. Don't you understand the joy that will be in his soul that you made it? Amen. Huh? Don't, watch it. Don't you feel how joyful the Lord will be uh -huh. if you showed up there the way he said you should come? And you coming in joy, knowing that the judgment seat is going to you know, be all right for you. Amen. Ah. Amen. That's the, the first fire. <laughs> the first blow has been shown. Yes, God. Amen. Amen. Ah, my God. Brother, I can't wait for, for us to go to Ghana, for us to go to Togo, for us to go to the Afro Coast. Okay, so that we can blast the Amen away all over. That, that, yeah, they'll be saying the Amina train is coming. Ooh. Get you ready. Uh, <laughs> uh, Pastor Fee, you'll be ready, Brother Dwayne will be ready, but who else will be ready? Uh, who else will be ready when, when, when the Amina train is ready to go? Amina. <laughs> ah, yes, God. <laughs> uh, you come and meet us in Ghana. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then, and then. Amina. Yeah, yeah, we'll meet us in Togo. And then, and then my nephew in, in Abidjan will be meeting us there. In the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, in Togo, Togo. <laughs> Brethren, it is a joy to know that the Lord is waiting for his children. Not to go to hell, but to come home. A home is prepared. But will you make it there? And why won't you make it there? Why do you have to go anywhere else? Why do you allow the devil to lie to you to go somewhere else? When home, with all the comforts, uh, have been prepared for you in the heavenly, waiting for your arrival. Oh God, may it never be so. May your children never disappoint you. May those in Shikana worship a family worship center be faithful. Yeah. May, may, may all of them be faithful in their hearts, in their devotion to Christ. Yeah. Father, after they've been baptized in water, Lord, Lord, Father, in their baptismal you know, immersion, all right, they vow that, Lord, they will commit themselves to you. Yeah. So, Lord, I'm expecting them to keep their promise to God. 
Uh, they are not going to live any other way, but live the, the life Christ has said we should live if we want to come home. So if you don't make it, you don't blame nobody. But I, 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 I believe that you know what is better. Uh, I believe that you know that the way ain't easy. But I believe you know that the Lord is ready to help you. To sustain you. By the Holy Ghost. Oh, my Lord. You got Holy Ghost. The advantage of the Holy Ghost. Brother Dwayne, did you up upload it? Upload the Holy Ghost advantage word? I don't, not yet. <laughs> Brother. Well, you gave me hope. <laughs> Ooh, yes, God. My brethren, I love you. When I talk like this, you don't get mad with me, okay? Do you remember? It's for your good. Okay? I'm, I'm a shepherd that is after the sheep. Want the sheep to go home. Amen. You want no sheep not going to the devil, going to the lion. Oh, no. I got me a stick. The stick of the shepherd. Ah, yes, God, to make sure that the sheep come home. Amen. They come home. Pastor Phil also got his stick. Ooh, yes, God. Ooh, yes, God. Ooh. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. you guys are blessed to have two shepherds. Okay? But uh, me, 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 very soon, you, you, you ain't going to see me no more. I'll be going somewhere else. But uh, that, that's all right. I have to go somewhere, you know, and call the others too to come home. But... Uh, yeah, but Brother Dwayne and, and, and Pastor Fuse are there. Brother Dwayne, nah, you ain't got no stick now, so don't labor to get your stick. <laughs> Woo! Uh, you didn't say amen, Brother Dwayne, you didn't say amen. <laughs> you, you must have your, your, your shepherd's rod. Hey, I'm a, I'm a you want to you wanna, you wanna, you wanna care, care for the sheep? All right, where's your authority? <laughs> and that's something. But the Lord is preparing you for that. So labor, labor, ah, spend and be spent. Labor on, go labor on, spend and be spent. For it is the way the master, ah, yes, went. And should not his, his what, his disciple, his servant also go the same way? So you and Pastor Phil will be going the same way to make sure the sheep come home. Ooh, yes, God. Now let's go before our God, our great and most precious God. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We, uh, we are so grateful this morning. Our hearts are flooded with joy. Our hearts are rejoicing because you are a good God, a loving God, a kind God, a God whose patience, uh, whose patience is, Papa, is, is, is incredible. The patience of our God, the long suffering, the macrothumia of our God is incredible long suffering patience uh thank you for being our god and we know that lord when all is said and done the lord's mercy will bring us home the lord's strength would uphold us with his victorious right hand because we are determined that we will not go any other way except the way of righteousness holiness and truth the way of love the way of humility the way of surrendering our lives and our body to our god so, Father, God, preserve us from all destruction. And Father, we thank you that I know you'll bring us home. So bless us this morning. Father God, I know your will is to release your word to your children. This yeah. morning, have your own way. Yeah. This morning, Lord, speak thy own word. The words of life shall flow, O oh God, from the heart of your servant, or right, as you pour it into my being. So, Father God, I will not stand in the way. I will not hinder you. I will allow you to, Lord, to have your freedom to, to, to bring forth the word you want. Whatever you want on your heart to give to your children, Lord, you are free, O oh God, to bring it forth. And I believe that, God, the people shall be blessed. And we shall all rejoice and say thank you, Jesus, for blessing us today, for strengthening us, for pouring out your love, your strength, your wisdom, your revelation and understanding, your knowledge into our being this morning. Or bless your, your, your inheritance, your people, and Lord God, and watch over us. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, God. Now, who, who, who are online? Who are those online? 
Alex is online, uh, mm -hmm. Sister Wanda, Angel, uh, Togo, Caden, uh, Sister Kathy, and Charlotte. Kathy and Charlotte, good. Thank you, Jesus. All right, we 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 bless you guys. You are you are faithful, and I and, and I believe that one day I don't know how it's gonna be, but one day all of us will meet. We'll meet a lot in the in the meeting. I don't know how it's gonna happen, but we'll meet. All of you will be there, from Ghana, from Togo, from wherever. You shall all be in one place worshiping the living God. I don't know how, but I know it's going to happen. So you know, you know, be of good cheer and keep on joining and receiving the word. As of now, that's your assignment to make sure that you are online here in the word of God. And uh, a time will come that, that the mercy of God will assemble all of us together. Ooh, yes, God, and we shall see each other's face. And now we yet alive and see each other's face. Yes, God, by the grace of God. Yes, God. He never, he never deserted us, but he has delivered us. And he'll bring us all together in the fullness of time. We shall see each other, whether in Ghana or Togo or in America. We shall one day all meet. Yes, Woo! yes God. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God for his mercy. Now, yes, last week, last week we had a word. The word on the on the marriage that God wants. You all remember that? The marriage that God desired. The new order of marriage. When the Lord you know, you know, told us that he will no longer wink at the way his people have, have conducted their marital union services. With the things of the world, with the rings and jewels and all kinds of stuff all right, to beautify themselves. So there is no more. No more will he allow his bride to be, to be adorned with worldly unclean things. No more. His church will never be adorned with the worldly stuff, right? Like a weave on and rings and jewels and earrings and wigs and stuff. These are of the world and they are not of God. And the law will never sanction that. He said, I will never sanction that. And it is holiness and righteousness all the days of your life. So then if anyone's going to go to heaven, he should make sure that these things are not part of his, uh, 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 of his lifestyle. If you want to go to heaven, make sure that you get rid of all these things that are abomination. Don't, don't argue with God because you will, you will end up in the wrong place. So if you are a woman, if you are a man, you see, uh, yesterday we were, we were talking, I was talking with my scribe, we were going over some stuff. He said, he, remember, he reminded me that, all right, the jewels and all this, men also put some, some uh, golden chains around their, around their neck and all that. Say, yes, God, yes, God. You, 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 you and bangles are not going to look at them nowadays, wearing chains and their chest bare up as if they are, what? What are you showing? When I uh, when invite the devil? Okay, with your bad, bad chest, with your with, with, with your chain yeah. around your neck. Come on now, are you a puppy dog who has a chain around his neck? <laughs> oh my God, I mean. <laughs> so I'm get mean. rid. Of, yes, God, get rid of everything yeah. that God said He hates. Okay, now nowadays men wear earrings. That's crazy. Men wear earrings. That is crazy. Okay? No, not even not even the gay people. But you no know, men, ordinary men, look at look at the basketball you know, players and look at all the soccer people and look at all that they got earrings in their nose and they are in the, in the what, what Python times here? What great madness is this? Is that what God said a man should dress up? Okay, and men also wearing tight. Tight skin pants, men, tight skin pants, and you look in, in front of them, quite anti Sanya. How can you do that? All right, okay, you should be decent, okay, and, and think about the holiness of God in your attitude, right? You should not wear anything that you expose in anything, okay? So be, be very careful, men, be careful. 
Right, look at men, all the all their pines, even grown up pine with their pines on their on their bottom. Quite and time, Sanya. Are you a believer and you are doing this too? This is craziness. You want to bring what is in the world into the house of God? Quite and time, Sanya. What great madness is that? So don't bring the Lord is trying to you know, set apart his people from the world. So whatever he says he don't like, he don't like. I don't care what, what reason you have to wear it. It will send you to hell if you, if you insist on your disobedience. Right? So I'm talking like somebody who knows the path. Because the Lord has spoken to us about that path. Because this is the way I want my children to go. And so I'm a messenger. Don't get mad at me. I love your soul. That's why I'm talking like this. That when God loves your soul, he wants you to come home. Don't want you to end up in anybody's camp. Right. right. So brother and sister, listen carefully to the word of God. Right. Last week, we, 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 we began with the marriage that God wants. Right. We, and we, in, that, in that message, we had two sections, if you remember. The first, the, the first marriage you know, uh, 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 message was the story of a man right, who was going to marry that the Lord has you know, agreed, right, you know, you know, you know, giving him a marriage, because a woman that, that the Lord wants to give to him to marry. All right? But the Lord said, before this marriage can take place, ask the man, okay, what is more important to him, his soul or his marriage? You all remember that? That's right. Okay. Now, if you don't remember, please don't, don't forget. Because the Lord said a lot about that through that message about how to prepare for heaven. Yeah. Your marital union was given to you so that both you and your wife together walking in the Holy Ghost and in, the, in, the, in love before God will serve God, live for God, and in the end come home. God gave you a woman to love, and God gave you a husband to honor. Woo! Azu, Azu. You hear that? God gave you a woman you can love, and a, and, a, and a husband you must honor and love as a woman, as a wife. Now you're fighting. Now you're kicking. Now you want to be on your own. Now you don't want to support your husband. Now you don't want to go with your wife anywhere you, you, where you must go. It's all chaotic. In the marital home. Quiet and time, son, what great madness is this? And yet it is written, uh, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother. Ah, yes, God. And cleave, cleave this glue. You cannot, you, you, you cannot uh, what, uh, 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 put it away. The glue of Christ that unites a man and his wife, nobody can separate. Ah, and your brother quarrels. Jim said, where do we have quarrel from? Where do we have disputes and all these things? That is not even what? It rise from your, your fleshly desires and appetites. So you fighting and you kicking and you don't, you don't ask God and you ask God, you don't receive nothing because of your unclean motives in why you ask them from God. So all these things, it should not be so. In the, in the marital home, whoo! So the Lord gave you this marriage, told the man, what is more important to you, your soul or your marriage? And, and, the, and the guy thought about it, okay? And, and what the, the Lord wanted to hear is what the guy said, said, my soul is more important to me at this time than my marriage. And the Lord explained why. Because, you see, if the soul is right with God, in union with God, is seeking God first, as a priority in his life, then the soul is right under God's control so that God now can bless him with a wife. Right. And the wife and him will live together under the, the guidance and care of, of the Lord God himself. Right. They will love one another and walk together in union. Then the Lord said, if the soul who has prepared himself, right, by the principle of seek fresh the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right? If the soul has lived that way, then he's ready. He knows what is priority. He knows what is good. 
You see that? So when he marries, he ain't gonna be you know, you know, led astray by his spouse. Okay? And neither will he lead you know, his spouse astray. They will stay under God. And he said, if anything happened, because the peace of God is in that man's soul when he married, all right, he knows he, he has nothing to fear. Whether he will make it or not, he knows it because of the way he has walked with his wife. He has walked with his bride under, under the care of the Holy Ghost, love, joy, peace in his soul. So if something were to happen and he died, the Lord said it, that he will come home to him. He ain't going to have no problem. You see that? So marriage, marriage, the marital union is a place for the man to prove his love to God by loving his wife. Right? If you don't love your wife whom you have seen, how can you love God whom you ain't seen? Ooh, ooh. So to love God, you must love your bride. Yeah. See that? And, and uh, if you want to you know, surrender to God, or if you're a woman, you want to obey God, but you don't know, you don't want to obey your husband that way, then you're lying. Because if you don't want to submit to your husband whom you have seen, but you want to submit to God whom you ain't seen, you lying. You see that? So the marriage union is a proven ground. Let's do what I'm saying. A proven ground. You know, when, when Ford, Ford Motor Company you know, makes a car, uh, around the Ford Motor Company in, in, in Michigan, they have grounds for proving the car, for testing the car. So they go and drive that car around that, 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 that area. In, there are mountains in there, everything that they drive the car at full speed, just going around testing every area. Okay, so they prove the, the capability of the of the of the car, the new car. All right, so it is with marriage. Marriage is the proving ground. Yeah. All right, of a man's love for God. Marriage is the proving ground of a woman's obedience to her husband and obedience to God. Ah, uh, brother, this is this is good stuff. This, we are talking like it is. Right. So if you are a woman and you having trouble, surrender to your husband, check, check your obedience to God. God it's, it's non-existent. If you're a man and you having trouble loving your wife, all right, check your, your, your love because you ain't loving God. Woo! Woo! I mean! <laughs> Brother, I didn't I, I didn't plan this yeah. much. I'm, talking, talking. I'm talking how it's easy. When you prepare your heart, you're a minister and you prepare your heart and you truly believe that God is the owner of the message, the owner of the ministry. All right. And you say, God, take my heart and say whatever you want to say. Just come flow through me and bless the people. The Lord will do it. You, yeah. th you think I you, you think I, I, I planned all these things I have said? I didn't plan that. I'm just, you know, you know, going over the message, just a little, you know, you know, just, and I look at where he's taking me. Last week, I didn't talk about how your uh, marriage is a proving ground. I didn't say nothing about it. I didn't even know. I didn't even come to my mind. But now it's coming to my mind, coming to my being. That is the Lord, how he leads and guides what he wants to say. So listen carefully to what the Lord is saying to you now. Your marriage is a proving ground for the man for the man's love for his wife and a proven ground for his love for God. And the marriage is a proven ground for the woman's obedience and submission to her husband, right? And her submission to God too. Woo! Uh, so if you're a woman, you are struggling with obedience, bye, 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 check your obedience to God. If you're a man, you are struggling with your love for your wife, check, check your love for God. You ain't got nothing. I mean, how can, you say, how can you say you love God but you can't love your wife? Ooh, does God not love you in spite of your mess? Yeah. Amen. Oh, man. Oh, husband. Does God not love you in spite of your mess and disobedience to your head, Jesus Christ? Man, yes. Ah, yeah. Man. How many men are rebellious to, you know, to their head? Yeah. You see that? But the mercy of God still you know, works with them. And you are, you, you, you are told you love your wife as Christ loved the church and you rebel. Exactly. <laughs> Ooh, I mean, 
now. Oh, hey, 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 don't keep, don't keep quiet on, on me now. We ain't going nowhere yet. Amina. I, I say, don't keep quiet on me. Brother Dwayne, you ain't coming. Amina. Uh, you ain't say no, amen. Uh, Brother Gabriel, no, I don't, I don't get to hear Brother G G Gabriel. Amina, you are Amina, why? You, 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 you lose it? Yeah, Amina. 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 <laughs> Ah, uh, brother Gabriel, you say I'm mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you see, your aunt say, don't hear, I'm mean from you. I'm mean, brother Gabriel, are you alive? He's, he's calling himself Jeremiah now, so you have to say Jeremiah. Okay, okay, brother Jeremiah, are you alive? Yeah, Holy Ghost. Yeah, the Holy Ghost. Uh, I'm mean. I'm mean. Okay, they say they want a mean from you. Is there no Amina way going on? Amina! Amina! A fly. <laughs> he said, You are Amina, will not kill a mosquito. Woo! <laughs> 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 uh, let the vim come. Right. Say with the vim. Amina! You don't hear me? Amen. Amen. Oh, but you see that? You see the real ones they are talking. That's right. <laughs> All right. So let me summarize it. We summarize this one. The first uh, uh, what uh, marriage? The first marriage that God was using to you know to teach us what he's what he's looking for. There are a lot in the in that first message. Okay. And then we came to a second a second you know, message right of last week. Also, also another marriage of a young man that is going to marry, and uh, the Lord has told him what he what he expects, and uh, and the man outright okay, disregarded God. You hear that? And so that marriage we started it, okay. And, um, and before before we started that part of the of the marriage, uh, of the second marriage uh, example of a disobedient you know young man. Uh, who wants to do what he wants? He don't. We don't want what God says. So he's looking for his own. Ain't that something? And there are multitudes like that. Many young people, many marriages that they think they are Moses, they know who they want. So they go for it, and then they, they make a shipwreck. After two, three, four years, nah, I don't love him no more. Shut up! You don't love him no more. Who, who, who led you to go and marry? Did God tell you to go marry? Now you say you don't love him. No why tanta in son? You see, it's, it's garbage. When you want a marriage, you better prepare and let God choose the woman he knows will fit you. But if you go and grab your own and trouble comes, you, you will stick with it. Okay? So please, the time has come that God will not wink at the disobedience of his children. He said he will not wink at that anymore. Said that the, the times that have passed, he winked at a lot of things. But these are these are the end times. He ain't gonna wink at anything. What he said his children should live by is what he expects them to live by. What he said that the pathway is is what the pathway is. There is no change in the house of God, as far as God is concerned. Right? So you 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 better understand that this God is 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 stamping, is is putting his foot down. Let the people know he ain't gonna uh, to tolerate any disobedience in his house. He ain't gonna tolerate any rebellion anymore. All right, the hour has come where he must have a people, a people who are sanctified by him, a people who love God, a people who walk in holiness within and holiness without, a people of humility, a people who walk in truth and walk in love, a people who will, will listen to the voice of their God and do whatever God is asking them to do and honor him by their life, by their commitment to God, right? That's what, that's what God is looking for. So the second marriage, come, let's, this is the song that, that the Lord introduced the second you know, marriage, but this is what it was all about. So when he intervenes, everything goes well. Yes, when the Lord intervenes, everything goes well. What man could not do and what angels could not do, when Jesus intervenes, everything goes well. 
Yes, what man could not do and what angels could not do when Jesus intervenes, everything goes well. Yes, what man could not do and what angels could not do when Jesus intervenes, everything goes well. And then I read the message. Okay, that goes with this song, All right? And then, so after this song, after this message here, which completes the first you know, message, uh, uh, of that, that was in, uh, uh, May 29th, the, the first message, right? Then I said there is a second message and then a third message, which we couldn't read last week. And so we are going to continue from, from, from last week's in our, in our message and read the second message and then the third message. Okay, that will be the part two, right, of, of last week's message. So, but, but I want to make, make sure that these are published as part one and part two, okay, to the, okay side by side, so that you, 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 re, you listen to part one and then you continue with part two. That will be, uh, okay, that will be the, no, 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 the best way to present it to the people. Part one, part two, you know, standing together next, next to each other. All right. So then the, 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 the beginning of the continuation, uh, I have signed the song. I read the song. So we're going to continue. So now the background was, this one is uh, May 29th, 4.32 a.m. 4.32 a.m. And the background was of the message. The Lord returns a few minutes after the marriage message, okay, that, had, that he had just uh, given to us. After the, mar the, 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 the marriage message he, he had just really, uh, given to us and we just ended it, okay? All right, the, 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 the marriage uh, message completing, okay, the first one. So he returns and he says this, yes, that's it. Yes, that's it indeed. Tell the second young man who rebelled. Tell him, all right, that it is because he is mine. Because this young man, this young man belongs to God. The Lord has made it clear. He is his, right? So he said, it is because he is mine, he belongs to me. That is why I am showing him mercy. Listen to that carefully. That is why I am showing him mercy and being merciful to him. Listen to what he said. It is because he is mine, the mercy of God for his children. Before anything happens to any of his children, the Lord will make sure that he's done everything, all right, for you not know, to help that child in showing him mercy, showing, giving him grace to obey God, to do what is right by God. But if the, if the child is obeyed still and does what he wants to, then there's nothing else now but a fearful looking forward to, you know, some, some, some punishment or some judgment. Okay, and, and, and let's see what God says. Tell him that it is because he's mine, he belongs to me. That is why I am showing him mercy and being merciful to him. If it were not so, this marriage would never take place, neither today nor tomorrow. Hear that? Amen. <laughs> I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you guys. I didn't hear you guys. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Please, please listen. All of you are sons of God. At least. I believe that you know you are serious with walking with God. All right. So it, it says, because you belong to him, he will show you mercy. Okay, he will show you his mercy. He'll be merciful to you in dealing with you. All right. If you show some stubbornness. Okay, he will deal with you. He will try to correct you and show you mercy because you belong to him. But that does not mean that, all right, you can do whatever you want to do still. He's showing you mercy so you walk in his ways. Remember that. Those of you who one day you, you like to marry, those of you who you know who you want to do something for God and God has not approved, and yeah, you want to do it anyway, be careful. Guy, okay. so I say, yeah, because he's mine, he belongs to me. That is why I am showing him mercy and being merciful to him. If it were not so, this marriage will never take place, neither today nor tomorrow. 
Yes, because I will show him mercy. Okay, that is why this marriage may take place. If not, they, should, they would go up and down and make all kinds of proposals and preparations. That marriage will never come on. What is he talking to you about? His power to nullify all of your plans. Amen. Yeah. Are you hearing that? Stubborn people, some, some stubborn people, God is going to prove in this end time. All right, how stubborn he is. He will nullify your plans that you want to you know, you know, do without his help. You want to take things into your own hands and live any way you want to. Okay, you cannot. So listen to what God is saying. All right? He said, if it were not so, if it is not because I'm going to show mercy and be merciful to you. All right? He said, this marriage will never come on. Because, you see, the Lord did not approve of it. The Lord says a thing, some things that that woman is not the kind of woman that he wants for his son. So that, that marriage will not come on. And some of you going to marry whatever you want? All right. You, you try it and see if God will be there with you. Okay? And if God don't, don't bless your marriage, then who has blesses? Bless your marriage. The devil. Because he will be there. Yes. You'll be happy to be there. Yeah. <laughs> the devil will be happy to be there. <laughs> self self invited. Whether you like it or not, he's coming. The moment you disobey God, you know, he's right there. The devil is right there. So so be careful. Let your yes to God be yes. Don't be double-minded, right? So he says, if it were not so, this marriage will never take place, neither today nor tomorrow. Yes, because I will show him mercy that this marriage may take place. That is why this mar marriage may take place, because I will show him my mercy. He says he doesn't want or what. Is, now listen to God. Listen to God. The Lord, the Lord is telling him, all right? He says he doesn't want what I'm proposing. The woman I, the Lord, know will be a blessing to say you don't want it. All right? But listen to that. Listen. Boy, you, are, you are hearing that the young man say he don't want what God has for him. Outright disobedience. Outright rebellion. And then God says, because he's, he's mine, I will bend backwards to accommodate him. But there will be certain conditions that he will have to honor. If I'm going to allow that marriage, that woman he's chosen to not to be part of it, then there are certain conditions that he must obey. If they are willing, all right, to abide by the conditions I will set, then I will know that that woman truly loves God, truly loves me and, lo and loves my, you know, my son. So he set the condition. We saw some of the conditions in the, in the second message of, of last week, right? So now he's going to continue to bring forth more, more conditions. He's going to explain what he's looking for so he can allow them to marry. You know? And then he go out of his way to bless them. Ain't that something? Yeah. Amen. Ain't that something God will, will go out of his way to, to bless? Amen. But there is a reason why. There is a reason why okay, this will be so. But I ain't, ain't, ain't going to talk about the reason. I know the reason. Because God, God, God's mercy came because there's a reason, right? But I won't, I won't say that one day I'll tell you the reason. Right it's here, it says here, if it were not so, this marriage would never you know, take place, neither today nor tomorrow. Yes, because I will show him mercy that this marriage may take place. If not, they would go up and down and make all kinds of proposals and preparations. That marriage would never come on. He may plan for it whichever way he wants it. The eternal Lord God, my goodness, the eternal Lord God will cause everything to crumble. All their plans, all their plans would always be destroyed by the eternal Lord God. If I, if I, if, if I don't show mercy, but that's what I'm going to do. Nothing will happen. You hear that? Yeah. Amen. 
Nothing will happen if I, the Lord, don't show mercy. They can plan all they want. I will destroy because they are rebels. You say, yes, that's all I have said. If I do not show him mercy, nothing will take place or go well for them. Now, have you not read the word of God? Do you see the word when you read it? What does the word of God say? Man may plan his way, but the eternal Lord God will always collapse all their plans. Amen. Do you hear that? I have a, a, a list of uh, you know, you know, passages of, of scripture, all right, for this very thought that God has expressed. Okay? The, this very thought, a lot, a, a list of uh, scriptures, I'll give it to you. So he says, he says here, it is what God allows that will happen. Amen. Have you not heard what people always say? Man proposes, but God disposes. Have you not heard that? Yes. Okay, because you know people do, people do say that, right? Man proposes, but it is God that will dispose of it the way He wants it. Yes, it is true indeed, and so you should know and understand clearly that if you desire to walk with the eternal Lord God, then you should allow him to have the preeminence. Amen. Notice this word. And I'm going to read this, the, 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 this word to you in the scriptures. So I say here, because man proposes and God disposes. Right? So it is true indeed. And so you should know and understand clearly that if you desire to walk with the eternal Lord God, then you should allow him. You should allow him. You must allow him to have the preeminence in all things. And that, and that, and, and let him lead the way. Allow him to be first and let him lead the way. Nina. I say, allow, he said, now, you want my ways? You want the blessing? You want me to guide you? You want me to guide you in your ways and don't go your own way? Then allow me to be first. Amen. Now, you, you, you ain't going to say amen, but that's all right. In the house, I'm not getting some amen now. I'm not getting amen in the house. Come on now. Don't come and sleep on me. Amen. <laughs> Ooh, all right. Go with me to the book of Colossians. Take your Bible, each one of you. Take your Bible. Because this is a, a mighty word. Preeminence. Amen. You don't, the God, you don't know the God that you are dealing with. Right? And you, if you don't know him, you will stumble. I'm, I'm telling you, many have stumbled because they wanted to be rebellious to God and think that God is a weak God. Brother, don't, don't go there now. God ain't weak, but because he's merciful. See the mercy. The man rebels. He don't want to take the, the woman that God has for him. God has said, this woman you want to marry ain't the right person. Going to cause you no problem. The Lord revealed the kinds of problems that this woman will bring to this young man. All right? The Lord said it so many times, okay, because we knew it. The Lord revealed that to us, okay? And we're trying to you know, talk to the young man about what God is saying. He ain't listening. What? Oh, he ain't listening. Who are you to tell him which kind of woman you're going to marry? Woo! God have mercy upon your soul if you go that way. Can you say amen? amen. Amen. All right. God have mercy upon our souls if we go our own way, thinking that God would, would you know, we just do whatever, you know, you know, you know it's, it's all right, but then we can do him. We can outdo God and get on with our way. All right. Maybe you are you maybe you will not die, right? That's why you are trying to you know do your own way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You turn into a stone on earth. Oh, yeah, yeah. You ain't gonna die. And you ain't gonna come before God. When you die, you have your special place you go and you don't have to appear before God. All right, that's what you're thinking. All right. You go ahead and think that. But when death comes, it will be too late for you. Amen. Ah, yes, God. Now, Colossians chapter chapter 1. I tell you. Woo, yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Um, now, he says here. <clears throat> he says here. We pray, verse 11. I want to read this, this chapter. 
because this is, this is something that people turn to ignore, the preeminence of Jesus Christ. In um, everything, in every area of your life, right. the preeminence right. belongs to him. The first place in your life belongs to Jesus. Amen. Okay, so he said here, we pray, verse 11, in the Amplified. We pray that you must be invigorated and strengthened with all power according to the might of his glory to exercise every kind of endurance and patience that hupomone and macrotumia. These are the two words. You remember last, uh, last time when, when we were doing the fruit of the spirit? All right. So, okay, endurance and patience, perseverance, okay, and forbearance with joy. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified and made us fit to share the portion which is the inheritance of the saints, God's holy people in the light. The Father who has delivered us and drawn us to himself out of the control of the dominion of darkness and has transferred, translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Amen. In whom, in whom the son of his love, Jesus Christ, in whom we have our redemption through his blood, yeah. which means the forgiveness of our sins. Now, this son, he is the exact likeness, likeness of the unseen God. Amen. Look at, look at who this God that he's asking you that he should have preeminence. Look at who he is, this Christ. That he is asking you, make me first in your life. The yeah. first place in your life belongs to me if you are my son. Yeah. Listen, listen to who he is. He says here, ah, now he, the son, this Christ, is the exact likeness of the unseen God, the visible representation of the invisible God. He is the firstborn of all creation. Amen. For it was in him that all things were created in heaven and on earth, things seen and things unseen. Amen. Thrones, dominions, rulers, authorities, all things were created and exist through him by his service, intervention, and in and for him. Amen. And he himself, ooh, he himself existed before all things. Amen. And in him, all things consist, cohere, and are held together. Everything, uh, everything is held together in Christ. That's right. Everything. Then he said, he is the head. Notice, are you part of the body? Are you part of the body of Christ? Are you a child of God? And you are part of the body of Christ. A part of the church of Jesus Christ. Now you listen. You are not headless. You are not without a head. A child of God has a head. You are not without a head. Your head is Christ. And you cannot just get up and go and dishonor him and do whatever you want. Now listen. He says, he says here, he is the head, also the head of his body. Are you part of his body? Yes. Amen. Amen. Is every child of God part of the body of Christ? Amen. So the body must have a head, just as your human body has a head. You don't have no head? Are you a body with, without head? No. It's <laughs> not that some people that they, there's something they said. They, 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 they eat a fish called fish no head. Okay, the <laughs> fish without head, that's what they love. <laughs> but in Christ, there's a head. There's a head over the church, a head over the body. And so uh, understand that you are not just a child of God who can determine what you want aside from God. I mean, Amen. Amen. Right, so he said, see, he is also the head of his body, the church. Seeing he's the beginning right. and firstborn from among the dead. 
so that he alone in everything and in every respect might occupy the chief place. Amen. Stand first and be preeminent. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. In how many things? In, in how many things is she preeminent? In how many things is it, does she want to be preeminent? In everything. Oh, that includes your marriage. Uh, that includes your marriage. That includes the church. I mean, the church of woman. That in includes everything, how you live, what I you mean. do. I mean. So does it not line up with seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? That's right, yes. And yes. that everything else I mean. will not yeah. fall in place. Yes, indeed, this is true. Yeah, it's true. Seek ye first the kingdom. This 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 kingdom of God, okay, is under Christ. Christ rules over it. That's right. Christ rules over his body and the kingdom of God, all right? All right, the kingdom of God is where the church lives. We live in the kingdom. We have been brought into the kingdom. I said we have been brought into the kingdom. There is a head over the church. And there is a head in the kingdom. The Father God has deputized everything to the hands of Christ. That's right. Amen. So he said, let me, let me read the King James. He says here, ah, yes, go verse 18, King James. And he's the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that in all things he might have the preeminence. Preeminent uh, in all things. Um, right? Let's go ahead. Let me go ahead and read some more. He said, uh, he is uh, also the head of his body, the church, amplified, seeing he is the beginning, the firstborn from among the dead, so that he alone in everything and in every respect might occupy the chief place, stand first and be preeminent. For it has pleased, it has pleased. It has pleased the Father. It is the Father's pleasure. It has pleased the Father that all, all, not, not small, all the divine fullness, the sum total of the divine perfection, powers, attributes should dwell in him permanently. Dwell in Christ. <laughs> if you defy Christ, brother, you have defied the Godhead. That's right. You have defied Father Son and the Holy Ghost. Right. Can anybody be in a, in a serious trouble more than this? The man defied the Godhead. <laughs> this young man, brother, he in trouble. Okay? Do you see the trouble he is in? Because nothing God said he should do, he you know he did. Ain't that something? <laughs> Ooh, I tell you, this is serious. We're talking marriage and the choice of the of the of the spouse that you're gonna have. If you are a child of God, please remember. That you are you are not without a head. Yeah. Your head is Jesus Christ. He's the head of the body. Okay? And in the body, there are authority mm -hmm. st structure. Okay? All right. Authority structure. Okay. Just set up in the in the church. Okay. So now listen, he says here. Ah, for it has pleased the Father that all the divine fullness, the sum total of the divine per perfection, powers, and attributes should dwell in him, Christ, permanently. And God purpose that through, by the service, the intervention of him, of the Son, all things should be completely reconciled back to himself, Amen. whether on earth or in heaven, as through him, the Father made peace by means of the blood of the cross. Right. It was through this Christ that now you have peace. Yes. You've, been, you've been reconciled back to God. And now, instead of surrendering to him, you say, no. 
instead of seeking to do his will, you say no. But I want to come to your heaven. Uh, but are you in your right mind when you do like that? No. Okay, so why do we do it? See, why do we choose to go our own way contrary to the will of God? Lord. Is it hard? Is it hard to surrender your will to God's will and get his will? His will is life. His will is joy. His will is peace. His will is strength. His will is success. His will is what gives you what, what you need doing his will. But you reject him. You want to go you know, choose your own and do what you want. Quite an time, Sanya. That's great madness, brother. Ain't no madness that surpasses this. Putting aside the triune God and their, and, and, and their guidance for your life. You go and do your own. Thy uh, own. Thy own. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not unto thy own. But you say, no, I'm going to lean on my own. And you lead on thy own. And you, and you, you arrive at the, at the place of own. And own. Ain't no peace in the own. Ain't no joy in thy own. Ain't no, ain't nothing in thy own. And there you are. Not, okay, wrecked. You have shipwrecked. You wrecked your life. You wrecked the woman that you marry. You, he, you, you wrecked her life too. How can you do that? Jesus. Ah, Jesus, have mercy. All right, so let me continue with the, with the message I was reading. Because I wanted to stress this point of preeminence. For the Christ who must be preeminent in your life, in everything, is the one that said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He's the one who brought God's message to us and revealed the Father God to us and told us we have a Father. And that he's the mediator between us, right, and the Father God. He's the one, okay, that brings us to God. No one can come to you know, you know, you know, what? to Christ except the Father, you know, draws him. So Christ told you the first thing that is important in your life is that make me first. Let me be your head. Let me be your counselor. Let me be the first, the, the first thing you think about is Christ and my will for your life. Right? So let's let, let, let's keep on. He says here, man, yes, man proposes by God disposes. Yes, it is true. Indeed, and so you should know and understand clear that if you desire to walk with the eternal Lord God, then you should allow him to have the preeminence in all things and let him lead the way. Now, if you do not allow the eternal Lord God to occupy the first place in every plan you make and in everything you desire to carry forward, then you will strive with all your strength to get things done. But nothing will ever succeed. No, your plans will never, ever succeed. Neither today nor tomorrow. You hear that? Oh. Where, where in any church are out there that they, 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 what? they told you this from God? <laughs> Huh? Did, did you hear any, any pastor out there saying this to God's people? No. To guide them, to guide them lead them to a home to God? No. No. Ah, that's here. Nothing will ever succeed. No, your plans will never, ever succeed. Neither today, nor tomorrow. It is simply because it is when the Lord gets involved in your plans that things go well and succeed for you. Yes, that is how things are accomplished successfully. Now, when you read the, the word of God, don't you see it? Just take a look at the disciples caught up in the stormy wind. Could they get anything done? Do you see them? All right, on the lake, on the, on the, on the, on, uh, on the Sea of Galilee? The lake, the winds, you know, is blowing and they, they, they are going to the other side and ain't going. They've been trying to row, ain't going. Everything is contrary against. The winds are blowing good, contrary, pushing them back. Yeah. So he said, he says, yeah, don't you see that they were 
in the boat all right. Yeah, they were. We said they could not get uh, the, what he said here. Could they? No, no. Could they do anything? Or could they have anything done? Could they get the boat going? Don't you see that they were in the boat all right? But the boat could not take them anyway. But when the Lord came on board, when the Lord came on board, ha, when they handed everything back into the hands of God, ha, when they put the guidance, the guidance, the, 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 what, the, 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 what, the, the cheap, uh, what, there's a, a, a name, cheap bo, uh, uh, Boschwein. Yeah, yeah, Boschwein. There's a word like that. The, the, the guy who st stays at the, at the helm of the of the of the boat and then and then make it go okay it has an english word but when jesus took the you know the ram okay the what, what the, the 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 power to direct everything now from them everything went smooth they got to the place quickly because the master was in the house the master took uh, took the helm okay from their hands and then directed or uh, steered the boat through the storm, storm or no storm, crisis in charge. The boat will go, storms will retreat, and when the boat will get to the shore. Because he's the master. Yeah. Don't you don't you want to see, don't you want to see you know your marriage you know, come, come the, the way God wants it? The master beautifying you, the master planning your marriage, the master in you know, making everything go and the presence of the Holy Ghost showing up at the day of your marriage, bringing glory to God, the people testifying about what happened. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, you, 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 what, what's, you, you guys, when I say give a mean, why are you stubborn? The Lord says always that listen, when I'm giving the word, the people should agree with me, come along with me. We are we are we are having a conversation. My messages are to my people. Amen. And when it is being read to my people, they should be involved in it. This is not my word. It is the Lord's word. How are you showing your appreciation sitting down the quiet? Amen. <laughs> yes, God. Yes, God. Uh, says here, don't you see that they were in the boat all right? But the boat could not take them anywhere. But when the Lord came on board, did you not see how immediately they got, they got to their destination? Yes, that is how it is. If the Lord does not get involved in anything that you are doing, what you are, are attempting to do does not succeed, nor go well. No, nothing will succeed without the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, if you say that you know the Lord, listen to that. If you say that you know the Lord, then don't you see that he must take the first place in everything you plan to do? Mm -hmm. If you say you know the Lord, if you know the Lord, what is natural? Let the leader, let the head show the way. Amen. Mm -hmm. Why are we so stubborn trying to go our own way? And you go and get wrecked, and then you scream. If, if I was God and you, know, you disobey my, my, my word and you wreck, I leave you there. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't come to your rescue because you were stubborn. Uh, uh. <laughs> but thank God, our God ain't like me. He ain't me. <laughs> so pray that I don't, the Lord don't, 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 don't give me one minute. She said, okay, come and stand in my place. One second. Oh, I'll kill thousands. <laughs> but I'll see all them rebellion and kill them. But thank God he's not like that. So he says, he says <laughs> now you say amen. <laughs> oh, yes, God. Now, if you say that you know the Lord, then don't you see that he must take the first place in everything you plan to do? Yes, he surely must be given the first place. Now, I want you to go and search the scriptures and learn my ways. You see, that's why I said I'm, I'm going to give you a series of scriptures, right? So that you, you can see what he talks about, you know, surrounding your plans to the Lord and all kinds of work that you need 
you need to know that the ways of the Lord. So he said, don't you see how, okay, one, one of them said, don't you see how I led my people Israel? Don't you see the ways I chose to, to lead them? Anytime they got me involved in anything they were doing, they always succeeded and were victorious in everything they did. But when they went it alone and separated themselves from me, whatever they did always ended in failure and defeat. Don't you see the word of God? Don't you see Joshua leading them and then they, they, they were disobedient and then Joshua said, don't go, don't go. He said, now we're going, now we're going, what happened? Don't you see Moses every time that they went by God's plan that they were successful? But whenever they failed you not know, to, you know, to go by the word, read the Psalms, the stubbornness of Israel and the problem that they, that, that they encountered. Ah, says yeah, but when they went it alone and separated themselves from me, whatever they did always ended in failure and defeat. Yes, it is true indeed. Yes, it is true. The, the eternal Lord God does not change. The way he was in the ancient days, in the years gone by, it is the same way he still is today, too. He does not change. Yes, it is true. Yes, indeed, it is true. Yes, it is true. And so this is all I wanted you to know and understand. And you too, you too, you must be very careful regarding all I have said. And know that the eternal Lord God does not change. Yes, the Lord God will never change. 20 years from now or 50 years from now, he will never change. That is how he is. 100 years from now, he will never change. The way he is is how he is always and how he will be forever. You know something? Yes, the eternal Lord God, almighty himself, the almighty, the mighty warrior himself, the everlasting God himself, Yes, the almighty Lord God himself. Yes, the, the I am that I am. Yes, I myself, I do not change. No, I do not change. The way I am is always how I am. The way I am is the way I will be today, tomorrow, and forever. I do not change the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so, that's all there is. There is nothing more to add. Right, so that that's the, the the second message, okay, and then and then we continue, okay. Four at four forty nine a.m. The third message comes. The Lord returns a few minutes after the last message, and again he speaks. He says, "Now I want you to remember Isaiah's prophecy." Okay, Isaiah's prophecy. Listen to that. I took my message from what Isaiah said. Okay, and it's in Isaiah 52, verse 11 and 12. So he said, depart, depart, go out from there, touch no unclean thing, go out of the midst of hell, okay, Babylon, cleanse yourself and be clean. Yes, you who bear the vessels of the Lord on your journey from there, for you will not go out with haste, nor will you go on or go in flight as was necessary when Israel left Egypt. For the Lord will go before you. The Lord will do what? Go before you. Oh, yeah, he has to go before you? Yes. Oh, yeah, does he have to go uh, before you individually? Yes. Yes. Because you are Moses. Uh, yeah, you are Moses. You can find your own way. You are, you are skillful in the wilderness of life. <laughs> oh yeah that, that's what people think yeah i can do my own thing you can do your own thing oh yeah 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 I, I, you don't know me i'm peter yeah 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 i go i go see all the time and i know and I, I know the water to catch fish yeah he went all night long he didn't catch anything human wisdom is not what we use to follow god all right so don't don't pretend that you can do anything if the lord does not lead you Amen. Okay, you said here, for you will not go out with uh, with haste, nor will you go in flight, as was necessary when Israel left Egypt. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rare God. Isaiah, Isaiah 52, verse 11 and then 12. 
He said, now I also want you to know, as I have said, also in Isaiah, the Lord's hand is not short at all, that he cannot save, nor his ear dull with, with deafness that he cannot hear. Right? And that is Isaiah 59, verse 1 and verse 1 and 2. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. Now, if you are coming before me, listen to this. If you are coming before me and you have already fixed what you want, you want from me, you already fixed it and settled it already as to what you want me to say. You hear that? You made your you made out your plan, brother. You know the answer. But you just want heaven's approval. Quite understand. You tell heaven what to approve. You are on earth, a place of darkness. Okay, and you make your plans, okay, in the darkness, and you want heaven to approve. <laughs> oh, Amina, this is great insania. Okay, insanity. You live in a place of darkness. The earth is fully clothed in darkness. The only light you have comes from Christ. Okay, and then you make your own plans. You ain't even shot God. Make all your own plans. And then you want those who live in the in, in, in the light up there to approve of it. But when when heaven looks at your plan, it's all darkness. That's right. Mm -hmm. Heaven looks at what you say, it don't make sense. Because they, they, they see tragedy ahead. They see pain and anguish coming upon you, you know, by the way you, you made your plans. You hear that? Heaven knows all about your plans. It ain't gonna work. It will bring you pain and anguish. But you are stubborn, insisting that your plan is good. Uh, no, Amina. Ooh, my Lord. Amina. Amina. <laughs> now, if you are coming before me and you have already fixed what you want from me and settled it already as to what you want me to say, you make a plan, you made your speech. Say, okay, Lord, speak like this. Yeah, Lord, this is the speech I want you to say. Yeah, give me this. You are directing heaven to tell you what to do. It, it says, this is the foundation of the earth. Is it not heaven that directs earth? That's right. <coughs> Amina. So why are you on earth trying to direct heaven? Um, to approve, to approve what you have what you have set out. To approve your ministry, so-called ministry. Uh, that's what some of the prophets did. They went when God didn't send them. They prophesied when God didn't say a word. They saw vision that didn't belong to God. There were visions, you know, you know, you know, you know of the pillow of the, of the pillow of their head. <laughs> that's what Jeremiah said. Visions that came to them when the, 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 their pillow was giving them visions. <laughs> their pillow. And that's <laughs> uh, when your pillow gives you gives you vision, brother. Now what what are you talking about? Pillow. You sleep and then you dream. Say, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the Lord, the Lord gave me that. All right. Says here. Now, if you are coming before me and you have already fixed what you want from me and settled it already as to what you want me to say, then how do I answer you? And state what is what is true to you. I sure cannot say anything to you because you have already decided what you want to do. Your plans are set by you already. And so, what do you expect me to say to you? You made your plans. What do you expect me to do? To, 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 I say, go ahead and do what you what, what you want to do. After all, that's what you want. You didn't ask me what was good for you. But you made your own, your own plan, so why are you going to ask me to approve? So you go ahead and do what you want. And many have many, many, many unscrupulous you know, you know, sons have gone ahead and done their own thing. Even when God told them, listen, why do you want me to approve this? When you made up your mind. They go ahead with their mind. Made up. Ah, says here, what do you want? What do you and so what do you expect me to say to you? That is not how you carry out things. No, 
That is not how you conduct yourself with me. This is very important. Let them know that when you are coming before the Lord, you must have a clean mind and a clean heart as you, as you enter my presence. You must not be a double-minded person and come into my presence with your mind already made up. In that, in that case, what do you want me to do or say to you? Because you have already made up your mind as to what you want to do. And so what should the Lord God say about your plan? However, if you leave everything in the hands of the Lord your God, he is the one who knows what is good for you. Right. And, and he also is the one who knows what is evil um, for you. He himself will give you the right answer. Um, yes, because he knows what is good. And because he knows what is good, he will answer you and show you and give you what is good. And every answer he will give you will be the very answer that is good for you. Amen. And, it is, and it is exactly what will be good for you. That's right. And what I want you to know is exactly what I have spoken to you. Okay, now. Add this message to what I have already given to you. And that will make the message complete. Yes, I say come out from among the people and touch no unclean thing. Yes, do not touch any unclean things. And I will receive you. Yes, yes, yes. Because the ears of the Lord are not deaf. Neither are his, his hands shortened that he cannot save. Now, what is now that is what the Lord wants you to understand. I am not deaf, I am not blind, my hands are not short. I can't save you, I can't hear you. But your sins have come between me and you. That's why I can't do nothing. I don't hear what you're saying. The iniquities of your heart are so thick that no light can, you know, can penetrate that. He says, he says here. Have I not told you that I hate and will not hear the prayers of the wicked? Why should I listen to the prayers of the wicked? I am a righteous God. And so it is the prayers of the righteous that my ears are open to. And I will answer their prayers. And so that's all there is. But I also want you to know that Part of the word I have given you comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11 to chapter 7, verse 1. Okay? Now, he said, you should also remember Isaiah's word so that everyone who wants to come into my presence will know how to conduct himself. You do not go ahead and make your own plans. You do not go ahead and make your own plans and then present them to me for me to approve what you have, your, what you yourself have already decided and want the Lord God to accept it and approve, uh, approve it hook, line, and sink in every area you want, you want God to approve. No, it shall not be so. But leave everything to the Lord and allow him to decide what is good for you. Now I have told you, to present your petitions to me, but I have not told you to decide on what you want to do about it. No, no, no. How do you come before me and ask me to approve what, what you have already decided that you want to do? That is not how you come before the Lord. You will not hear from me in that case. And so that's all there is for you. Amina. Amina. Now let Amina. me let, let me give you certain scripture, certain scripture that you must you must understand. You need it. That goes with this message about the Lord's ways. Now turn with me to Proverbs chapter sixteen. Proverbs you know, sixteen. Let me read something to you. Then I'll give you others. Proverbs sixteen verse three. And verse 9. 
verse 3 says in the Amplified, roll your works upon the Lord. Commit and trust them wholly to him. He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his will. And so shall your plans be established and succeed. You hear that? That's right. you hear that? If you want to work with God, you must take notice of these words. Roll your works upon the Lord. Commit and trust them wholly to him. He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his will. And so shall your plans be established and succeed. Right? And then the same chapter, verse, verse 9. Verse 9 says here, a man's mind plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps and makes them sure. Amen. Okay? You may plan your way, but if the Lord don't, don't direct your step, you fall into the pit. Okay? In, the, in King James it says, a man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Amen. Right? So you need the direction of your steps by the Lord. Yeah, even if you make your plan, okay, when, and you want to do it without God, you fall into a pit because your steps may not be the right steps that you take to be, to be able to, you know, fulfill what you plan. So okay. you end up, you you end up in a pit. Okay. Right? Okay. We have uh, Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. But man's steps. Proverbs 20, 24, man's steps are ordered by the Lord. How then can a man understand his way? Amen. You, you don't understand your way, even, even in your clear, clearest you know, in understanding, you, you can still miss your way. Because it is the Lord that guides your step. He may ask you to take you know, certain, certain steps, you don't understand it. But he knows where that will lead you. So when you when you refuse to follow his direction, you go and you know, you know, fall in a pit. There is a way that seems right to a man, but the, the, the end thereof are the ways of death. Yeah. How many people have said, This is the way, yes, go, yes, go. I got the way, and I'm gonna fall. And then boom, after three or five steps, there they are in a ditch. That's right. <laughs> right? Go with me to Proverbs 19, 21. 19, 21. Yeah, that's what he says here. 19, 21. Many plans are in a man's mind. Oh, you all got them. Oh, yes, God. You all got them plans. Oh, plan, plan A, plan B, plan C, plan Z. A to Z, you got them plans. <laughs> Many plans are in a man's mind, but it is the Lord's purpose for him that will stand. Amen. Okay, so Obemua, Ebe ye ye, so Obemua, Ebe ye ye, Adi o ni pan tu mi anye, Adi o bafu tu mi anye, Oh, Yesu Obemua, Ebe ye. That's the word, that's the song. When Amen. he intervenes, all things go well. When he intervenes, you know for sure it's going to go well. Because what angels could not do, what man could not do. When Jesus intervenes, you bury he's going to do it for you. So that is the song and that is the message of guidance. Let Jesus be, be, you know, be part of your plans. Invite him in there. All right? And let him be the chief cornerstone that supports uh, everything that you want to do. He stands there on yielding, on compromising, and on an invincible and strong, uh, immortal God. An invisible God, immortal God. Ah, yes, God. How great thou art. How great thou art. How great thou art, immortal God. 
how great thou art. Brethren, it is time to go when you're gone. It's time to follow God. All, all right. And then we'll, let's go last, last one. Uh, Psalm 37. Let's go to Psalm 37. Uh, in fact, you can take the whole of Psalm 37. It's all kinds of guidance about God's ways, how he leads his children, how the righteous ought to, you know, ought to walk, okay, the steps of the righteous. Right now, Psalm 37, verse 23 to 24. All right, look at this, verse 23 to 24. The steps of a good man are directed and established by the Lord when he delights in his way. And he busies himself with his every step. Though he falls, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord grabs his hand in support and upholds him. Yeah. Uh, look at verse, like you can even go, go, go to 25. I have been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the uncompromisingly righteous forsaken? Oh, they are seed begging bread. Uh, all day long, they are merciful and deal, and deal graciously. They land and their offspring are blessed. Depart from evil and do good, and you will dwell forever securely. For the Lord delights in justice and forsakes not his sin. They are preserved forever, but the offspring of the wicked in time shall be cut off. Ah, then the consistently righteous shall inherit the land and dwell upon it forever. Uh, the mouth of the uncompromisingly righteous utters wisdom and his tongue speaks with justice. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. You hear that? You hear that? Amen. Amen. Okay, now listen to uh, we from the Jeremiah chapter 10. Verse three. And then uh, we shall end with this message and then go to the next message that we have. Je Jeremiah chapter 10. All right. Verse, verse 23. Okay. Here it says here. Verse 23. All right. Says here. Oh Lord. Yeah. Oh Lord. Please Jeremiah. In the name of the people. I know that the determination of the way of man is not in him. You hear that? But you think it's in you. The determination of the way of man is not in him. Ah, ah yes, God. He says it's not in himself. It is not in man, even in a strong man or in a man at his best, to direct his own steps. Yeah, that man at his best. Man at his best, he will still, you know, miss his way. Because it is not in him right, to direct his steps. He belongs to heaven to guide the, those on earth. You hear me now? So he says here, uh, verse, uh, verse 23, yes. Oh, Lord, please, please, Jeremiah, in the name of the people. I know that the determination of the will of a man is not in himself. It is not in man, even in a strong man, or in a man at his best, to direct his own steps. You hear that? Woo! Yes, God. May the Lord God help us. Help us to trust in God with all our hearts. And, and lean not unto our own understanding. And that in all our ways, we will acknowledge him that he is God. He is the perfect guide for us. Ah, yes, God, and he will direct our steps. So may the Lord God direct your steps. May you trust him. May you commit everything to him. And may you know that the Lord will not fail you. He said, my sheep know my voice, and they follow me, and they hear what I tell them. You are a sheep, then go to your God. Your God will speak to you. Your God will guide you. Your God will open the door for you. Your God will never forsake you nor, nor leave you. Say, so, behold, I am with you, even to the end of the age. Yes, God, I go before you. I'll carry you. He said, I have made them. I've created them. I'll carry them. Yes, God, on my back. I'll carry them with eagles' wings. Unto their old age will I be there for them. 
guidance or if God has given you this promise, why do you want to separate yourself from his guidance? His piercing eyes that see from miles and miles ahead. He sees everything. He sees all the dangers ahead of you that you are blind to. So why not see this eagle, this, this mighty eagle, almighty God, the eagle that never well, went astray, the eagle that knows far, far miles. He can see into miles and miles and miles ahead. This eagle is awesome. You can see all the dangers in the valleys, all the dangers on the mountains, all that is in, in, in the bushes. He can see all of them. So this God is the one who is able to guide you and bring you from earth to heaven. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. 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 Yes, God. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. May the Lord God help you. Now we're going to go to the, to the next word. The next word that is going to be different. Brother Dwayne.